At the absolute top of the list of things I did not expect to see on a leverless controller, a mobile phone holder. Okay, so this is not the flagship feature of this controller, but check this out. It's the Q. RD Maestro S3 leverless controller. This thing is ultra light, but somehow still packed with features like Bluetooth, wireless, light up buttons, and even a touchpad button. But how does it feel to use in game in fighting games? Let's find out. Just want to point out this controller was sent to me free of charge for the purposes of making this video. I don't have to send it back at the end. I wasn't instructed to say anything specific about it and all opinions are my own. All right, I have Street Fighter VI loaded up here with the QRD Maestro S3 plugged in. I'm using it wired, but this is a controller that does work wirelessly as well if you're going to be using it on a PlayStation or a other device that has Bluetooth. So it's actually just in regular mode right now, but if I press a couple buttons, I can also switch to X input mode. That's not really necessary, so I'm just going to use it as it is. And as you can see, absolutely no issue playing the game, pressing these buttons. There are some interesting specifics of this controller, so let's go into the details. First of all, the controller has the regular buttons that you would expect of a leverless controller, but it doesn't have the extra buttons that you're finding a lot of cheap leverless controllers these days. A lot of the other cheap controllers out there have a button here, here, and here so that you have like quick access using your thumb, your next finger, and your left thumb over here. What we have here on the S3 is just the regular layout with your left, down, right, and jump buttons, and then you've got your four punches and four kicks here on the side. Personally, I do like the controllers that have the extra buttons as well, but for a game like Street Fighter 6, you can absolutely play no problem without any kind of extra buttons. All you need is these main eight action buttons. They actually recommend in the instructions to use a thin object in order to pry the buttons out. All right. It's not a brand I'm super familiar with, but it says L-I-D-H-I-D-X on the Switch. And as far as I can tell, they look like standard MX Switches. And they come out a little more easily than I was expecting. That makes me a little bit worried that they're not in there super tight. But as you can see, they're not coming out. In all of my testing, I had no issues with the button caps like flying off the controller or anything. They seem to be stuck in there nice and securely. If you just hold down L3 and R3 at the same time for a couple seconds, then you actually get all the various different colors. At the moment, it's phasing through the different colors, but if I hold it down for a couple seconds, I can get it to stay put on these different colors. Now, the buttons themselves appear to be slightly smaller for the main buttons, and then a larger one here for the jump button. Don't know exactly what they are, but they look somewhere around 24, 26 millimeter for these small buttons, and maybe 30 to, I don't know, 32, 33 millimeters for this button. Then you've got the regular control panel buttons that you would expect. You've got the home, start, select, turbo, L3, and R3 buttons, and unusually on a leverless controller, we have the touchpad button that you can actually use in the PlayStation version of the game to reset the stage. On PlayStation, you can use it as a touchpad, but on PC, it's actually got two different functions. You might not be aware of this, but pressing on the left side of the button turns it into a select button, which you can use actually for some little shortcuts, and on the right side, it is set to be the options button. Then below the control panel, we also have an indicator light. This is useful to let you know when you've changed settings, including the SOCD modes. If I press the options button and the up button at the same time, you'll see it starts to flash, and that means I've changed SOCD mode. So for example, now when I press down and up, I will end up jumping. But if I press options and up again, I will cycle through to the next mode, and that will give me easy mode, which I'll explain in a moment, but that actually apparently makes combos easier. And then if I press it one more time, it will cycle through to SOCD2 mode, which is the normal one that you would use for, hang on, that's not true. Press down and up and I'm back in neutral mode. This is the one that you'll want to use when you're going to tournaments and playing Street Fighter 6. So I was a little confused because I updated the firmware today. Apparently there's a new mode where if you hold down left and then you press another direction like right, it will give priority to the most recent input. Now one curiosity which is sometimes added to these leverless controllers is easy mode, and I'm not 100% sure what it does, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it because no matter what I do with these half circle motions, it doesn't seem like the controller is making them really easier, or and I, even if it were making them easier, I don't really know how it's making them easier, so let's just not talk about it because I don't think it's an, a mode that you need anyway. Then again, if they would explain exactly what it does, maybe we would know whether it was useful. But just getting back to the regular gameplay, as you can see, using the controller to do your combos and everything. There's really no issue here. The buttons do exactly what you would expect. They're actually nice and soft and they're not, they say they've got like silent buttons. They're not completely silent, but they're very polite. I'll just put them up next to the mic. You know, they're not completely silent, 
but they are quiet and polite enough. I would be okay playing with this controller with other family members in the room. I don't think they'd get too annoyed because it's not like a high pitched sound or anything. I should also say that these key switches feel just fine. I think they've got a little more tension than I would expect when you push on them. They feel really springy. Maybe you like that. Maybe it makes the button feel a little bit faster, but I personally, I prefer for the button to just have like no tension at all. I just want it to feel super light. They've also got quite a lot of travel. They're not super low profile buttons or anything. They've got a lot of travel from start to finish here. I don't actually know exactly how many millimeters, but it feels like a full three or four millimeter stroke of a key switch. What I think we should talk about now is the specifics of this button layout, because as you can see here, it does look like a leverless controller, but there's something a little bit unusual about it. First of all, let's talk about the left side. You've got left, down, right, and jump. But something that's unusual about this controller is that they're not angled like this. When you have your hands come into the controller and have your hands move into the middle, because unlike a, a you know, wide set keyboard and mouse setup. When you're playing on a leverless controller, we often have our hands right here in the middle so that both thumbs have access have to this jump to button if necessary. But as you can see, instead of having your hands naturally coming in at this angle like this, you actually have to tilt your hands a little more like this. And this does feel a little bit strange, especially when you've got your hands in front of you. You can see your hand comes in like this and then it has to rotate to be forward to reach the controller like so. Same with the left hand. It comes in like this and then it has to rotate like this to be on the controller, which is really not my favorite angle for my wrist. Maybe you've got really narrow shoulders and this actually works perfect for you because your arms come straight out onto the controller. But if you've got fairly broad shoulders, I don't think I've got broad shoulders, but if you've got fairly average shoulders like mine, this does feel a little bit strange. I feel like it could be better if it were tilted like this. And the second thing that's a little bit peculiar about this is that even though these seem to be kind of 24, maybe 26 millimeter buttons, they are quite spread apart. So as you can see, I've got pretty average, maybe large hands. And as a, uh, with a very natural spread like this, my fingers end up like this with the keys kind of this far apart. So to get them to actually rest on these buttons, I have to spread my fingers a little bit further apart. And with all the cheap controllers out there, this is actually not very common anymore, having to spread your fingers unnaturally far apart because they can actually build the controller with custom buttons to have them as close as they want together. So actually going back to a controller where I have to like spread my fingers a little bit further apart to match these, I, don't, I guess these RGB rims, that seems to be important. I feel like it actually does kind of hurt my fingers to spread my fingers apart like this now that I'm used to having them so much closer together. And of course, that does carry over to the right side of the controller. If I have my hand just kind of naturally like this, you can see this is where I want the buttons to be. It's not far off, but as you can see, I do have to spread my fingers a little bit further apart to reach like this. If you have extra large hands, you might even prefer this. So it's just something that you should know. I've got fairly average, large-ish hands. And even so, I would have to kind of like spread my fingers out like this. Something else that's interesting about this controller is as you can see from the side of it, it is actually angled. And so we have a slightly tapered down edge to a smaller thickness here. And it's actually thicker at the top edge. It's very subtle, but it is there. And it means that the controller is angled towards you. So instead of having your hands come straight down on the buttons, they actually have to be angled a little bit like this. Now, this is actually similar to the Punk Workshop controller. And I said the same thing in my review for that controller that I don't really feel like there's any need for it to be angled towards you. There are some things like when you go to a tournament or when you're going to be setting up for an online match or something, let's say that you're changing the SOCD mode. That's when you start to realize that there are design quirks of this controller that make it a little bit more difficult to use. When you're in SOCD mode like this, you've got down and pressing up actually leads to up. You won't be able to use that in a Street Fighter 6 tournament according to the Capcom rules. So you'll actually have to go option and the up button, hold it down for two seconds, and then this flashing light will appear and you'll know that you've changed SOCD modes. But this is where it's important. You don't know what mode you're in, or rather it doesn't tell you what mode you're in. Even though we have this indicator light, it doesn't change color depending on which SOCD mode you're in, it just tells you that you've changed modes. So you have to kind of remember, I was in SOCD mode four, and it has now rotated, which means I'm now in SOCD mode one, which is also down plus up equals up. So I need to get myself to SOCD mode two, and the way to do that is to press this again, options and up, hold it down for two seconds, I see the flashing light, I go back and hopefully I'm in SOCD mode two. And as you can see, yes, down plus up equals neutral and 
left plus right also equals neutral. Now, the reason this is curious is because most other companies have already kind of figured this out. If you hold down a button or you press the cable in while pressing left, that's one mode, down for another mode, right for another mode, and up for another mode. That way I know that I'm switching to the mode that I always use, which is SOCD up. For me, even if I don't even know what the SSCD means, I know that when I press down this button and press up, I'm in the correct mode. But with this controller, because you have to cycle through the modes, you cycle through, and if you can't remember which mode is which, then you kind of just have to test in, in game. You have to be like, okay, down plus up equals neutral. Am I in up priority mode or am I in up priority mode with easy mode attached? This is also further complicated by the fact that the latest firmware update added an SOCD mode that wasn't in the controller when I first got it. So if you're playing at home and you can remember what mode you're in, absolutely not a problem. But when you're at a local event or a tournament and you're like asking your opponent to like, wait, wait, please wait while I like figure out what SOCD mode I'm in and like test my test my character in training mode to figure out what mode I'm in. There's, that's not going to fly at a tournament. You don't have time to be doing that, and it's just going to annoy other people. There's also a turbo mode. I don't really use it for fighting games, but maybe if you play bullet hell games or something like that, you hold down the turbo button, press a button, and then that will become turbo mode. If you press it again, it actually just stays locked in place in turbo. That's not a feature that I actually see that often. In terms of convenient features for the casual player, the QRD Maestro S3 actually has quite a lot going for it. It's got a battery built in so you can play it wirelessly. You can also hook it up to your PS4. And when you've plugged it into your PS4 once with the cable, if you remove the cable, it does work wirelessly. And in addition to that, you can also use this to wake up the PlayStation. Often with unofficial controllers, holding down the home button doesn't do anything, but actually holding down this Q button when the PlayStation is off will turn your PlayStation 4 on. So that's quite cool. Even though it's not an officially licensed controller, it doesn't have the eight minute timeout issue. A lot of these cheap leverless controllers are coming out where they say they're PS4 compatible, but they're not really. This controller, I plugged it into my PS4, played it for way longer than eight minutes, and and I didn't have any issues with it. So as far as I'm aware, it seems to be fine. Again, it's not as far as, I don't think it's officially licensed, but whatever board they've put in here, it does have whatever is required to bypass the eight minute timeouts. The controller is not compatible with PS5 or Xbox Series X as standard, but if you get adapters, you can make it work. What's interesting on the website is they actually write PSV, for PlayStation 5. I'm not sure, maybe QRD has forgotten that PlayStation Vita was a thing, or just maybe everyone's forgotten that PS Vita was a thing. Oh, it's kind of sad. One interesting feature that I don't really have much use for is the ability to change the amount of latency. I'm not 100% sure why you would want to add latency to a controller, but if you needed to sync something up, I suppose it could make sense. I'm not a big fan of how you select it though. Also, there was a firmware update and so it's changed the modes and one of them was removed. But if you want to go back to automatic, you hold down options and the 2K button here, it will flash and then you go back into automatic and you can see it's back to just regular short latency. I, I, but even with medium latency or high latency, I couldn't really tell. It didn't really feel like it added a lot of latency. So maybe it's just if you're very, very sensitive to that sort of thing. But I didn't feel a huge amount of latency coming from the controller natively. Like there's no latency issues. I just found it interesting that there was a latency mode selection function. One thing that I should point out is that this is obviously not super useful for me, but if you do play retro games or if you've got a handheld that would actually fit in here, it's actually a really cool feature. The only way that I'd be able to use this controller with this at this angle is I'd have to kind of like tilt my head back like this so that I'm at the angle facing the controller. It's like it's like assuming that you are a really, really short person. But in theory, I love the idea of having a phone holder on here, even if you're just using it to watch YouTube videos or watch tutorials. If I could have it set up like this, so I could read my phone vertically, that would be much better. One more thing that I often don't even mention, but people seem to like, is the fact that it does have a headphone jack. Of course, a handy feature to have if you like to play far away from your computer or far away from your TV and you like to still be able to have the audio coming through to your headphones. All right, to summarize my thoughts on the QRD Maestro S3, it's a very lightweight controller with a battery built in that you can actually use to wake up your PS4. And so in that regard, it has a lot of convenient features that most other leverless controllers don't have. They're not wireless, they don't have a battery built in, they don't have a touchpad, stuff like being able to wake up the PS4, that's kind of cool. But as a tournament machine, if you're using this as your main controller, 
for fighting games, I think the main things that kind of concern me are the button layout. I don't really feel like there's much reason for this layout. It doesn't feel like there's any ergonomic reason for it. And so as a result, for me, this is kind of an uncomfortable controller to use. But if you're not using it for fighting games, if you're just using it as a sort of optimal way to play platform games, or I don't know if you're playing retro games on it, maybe you only play, play on these two buttons down here, and maybe you like having them shifted a little bit to the left. But as a fighting gamer, it makes no sense for the bottom row to be shifted to the left, and it makes no sense for these buttons to be shifted down at this angle. They need to be a little more like this, unless it were a split layout controller where your hands are separated and then you've got a different angle entirely. I guess the main question you have to ask yourself is at $170, is this really what you want in a controller? Do you want a tournament layout that is good and ergonomic for your hands? Or do you want all of these extra features like it's going to be easy to turn on my PS4 when I'm sitting on my couch? Do I want to be able to play on this wirelessly? Do I want to be able to play on a game on my phone that's plugged into my controller? Or do I want to be able to watch YouTube videos while I'm playing fighting games? If those are your priorities, the Maestro actually has quite a lot going for it. But if you're looking for like a tournament controller or controller that's not going to be painful on your wrists over time, I do have some issues with some of the layout decisions here. Listen, that's it for the QRD Maestro S3. It's a very lightweight controller with wireless functionality and a number of wacky features like being able to attach your phone to it. The layout of the buttons themselves is definitely a little unconventional, but if this is the feature set that you're looking for, maybe check it out. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more and check out this video next if you love fighting games and leverless controllers and arcade sticks in general. I've been Nihongo Gamer. I'll see you real, real soon.